Hey, we are live on the air, 101.3 The Buzz. We're coming at you from the South Cleveland Church of God, and the sky is filled with clouds this morning. It is raining on us in this parking lot, and that has obviously affected a few people from being here. But how many know that the best of South Cleveland is already here? If you believe it, clap your hand. I mean, honk your horn if you believe it. Amen. Amen and amen. We are, we are glad that you're here this morning. And, and I realize there's lots that couldn't come. And we got, to, as a matter of fact, on Facebook Live as I was walking around the parking lot, Pat Pat said, oh, how I wished I could be there. But I've stayed home with Doug. Doug has been taken to the hospital this week. Uh what y'all honking? <laughs> huh? It's, it's delayed a little. Well, that was delayed a whole lot then. Listen, D Doug has been in the hospital this week, and so we want to pray for Doug that God would touch him. He's been having some, some heart problems. We want to pray for Steve's grandson who's in the hospital fighting for his life. Uh, he that They woke up uh, one morning this week, and he was uh, uh, non-responsive, and he's at Erlanger right now. And they're, they're questioning uh, if he's going to make it. So we want to pray that God would touch Steve's little grandbaby. I've got a good friend from Waxahachie, uh, Texas, one of my deacons uh, there, faithful friend of mine uh, for the last 20 years who is just terribly, violently sick, and they can't find out what's wrong with him. And I told him that we would pray for him from South Cleveland this morning. So as we open this service, would you just lift your hands with me in that car and let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for your anointing today. God, I thank you for an opportunity to come before your presence with thanksgiving, to enter into your courts with praise, to be thankful unto you for your many blessings. And God, I pray today that you would touch every person connected with this house that's sick in body, that you would help them and heal them and make a way where there seems to be no way. God, minister to your people. God, touch Steve's grandson. Touch Doug's story. God, touch Ronnie Bullard. God, let your grace prove to be sufficient. And for your many blessings, we'll be careful to give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Let me get right into the preaching uh, this morning, and then we'll worship and take communion uh, after our 30-minute program on the radio and you'll have to listen to the rest of that uh, through the speakers the way you have the last few weeks. I want to talk to you this morning about the most powerful and the most practical point of the resurrection. The, the, the most powerful and the most practical point of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you were here last Sunday, I preached to you from the first words of the great apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 when he wrote these words. He said, I want to remind you of the gospel. And I shared with you that, that word gospel, it translates, it means good news. And in the midst of this crisis, in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of this situation where we don't know what's taking place with the stock market and where the jobless claims are rising in this country every single day due to this pandemic, in the midst of all of this trouble, we need to be reminded that there is still good news today. God is on His throne. He sees you when you rise up. He sees you when you lay down and He is involved in your life. He has a divine plan for your life. The Bible says that you're to consider the lilies of the field. They spin not and toil not. And I say unto you that Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed as one of these. If God then so clothed the grass of the field which is here today and gone tomorrow, how much more is he going to take care of you? And I just reminded you last week that God is going to take care of you. If you're thoroughly convinced today, if you're absolutely persuaded that neither height nor depth nor angels nor demons nor things present nor things past nor things to come nor any other thing can separate you from the love of God which is in Christ, Jesus, why don't you take about 10 seconds and honk your horn and thank him for his many blessings, his peace, his strength, and his anointing. So, so, so here, is, here is what Paul said. Paul said, I want to remind you of the gospel that I have preached to you, that you have received, on which you took your stand, and by which you are saved. Listen, it's a gospel that has to be preached. You, you, 
You can tell who's listening to the radio and who's listening to me preach. Listen, it's a gospel that has to be preached. The Bible said, how shall they believe in whom they have not known? And how shall they know in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear unless there be a preacher? But not only does it have to be preached, it has to be received. It's not enough that you've heard the word, you've had to respond to the word. Not only is it and not only is it received, but it's a gospel on which you can take your stand. You can say, I am unwavering. I am unmovable. My faith is steadfast, and it's the gospel by which you are saved. Listen, I believe with all of my heart that there are people listening to me today that desperately need the resurrection of Jesus to do for you right now what the resurrection of Jesus did for Simon Peter some 2,000 years ago. Right now there are many people in our community and in our country and there are people sitting in this parking lot and listening to me on the airwaves this morning who are living their lives filled with fatigue, filled with futility, filled with failure and filled with fear. Listen, the resurrection of Jesus can change that for you this morning. 1 Corinthians 15 and 17 says, if Christ be not risen, your faith is futile and you are yet in your sins if he be not risen we are of all men most miserable listen to me everyone on these grounds has something in common here's what Paul said if Christ be not risen your faith is futile and you are still in your sins let me tell you something that we all have in common we have all sinned the Bible says in Romans 3 and 23 that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God Ephesians chapter 2 says we were all born objects of wrath by nature the Bible says there's none righteous no not one we are all we are all connected in this fact that we have sinned and fallen short short of the glory of Almighty God. And there are times in life, though, when if not careful, we forget the fact that we are objects of wrath by nature. There are times in life that if not careful, we've been doing good for a week or a month or a year, and if not careful, we'll begin to think too much about ourselves. You need to remember this today if you're thinking too much about yourself. The Bible says that a haughty spirit comes before a fall, that pride comes before destruction. My father experienced this firsthand as I as I heard him so many times relay this story. He, he gave his life to the Lord and God began to bless him. He gave his life to the Lord and God began to prosper him. Psalms 37 and 4 says if we will delight ourselves in the Lord, he'll give us the desires of our heart. We know that according to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, God will wants to bless us in the field and the city. He wants us to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Blessed when we go in and blessed when we come out. The Bible says in Psalm 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. In that law doth he meditate day and night. That man shall be like a tree that's planted beside rivers of living water that brings forth his fruit in his his season, his leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth, it shall prosper. And my dad began to walk under that blessing. And one day he sat down with my wife, or with his wife, my mother, and he said to her, Jane, I'm doing good, aren't I? Listen, we've got seven or eight crews of men working. We, we I've got enough equipment for a hundred men to work for me and to make money for us. I'm doing good, aren't I? And my mother looked at my dad and she she stroked his ego and she said, you are doing good. I'm blessed to have you. You're the greatest provider I've ever known. And my dad allowed pride to enter into his heart thinking that he was the source of all of these blessings. My dad testified that within weeks, jobs begin to fall through. Builders begin to get bids from other bricklayers when they had never got bids from other bricklayers before. Trucks begin to break down. Trailers would come off the trailer hitch as they were driving 
driving down the road. Everything that could went wrong, went wrong. My daddy said he lifted his hands to heaven and said, Lord, what in the world is taking place? How did everything that was so good get so bad so quickly? And he said when he asked God that question, God said to him, Eugene, Who's doing good? Eugene, who's the source of all of this? Tears begin to flow down my daddy's face. And he said, God, forgive me for taking credit for your blessing, your favor, and your anointing, and I will never do it again. Listen, you can't get to thinking too much of yourself. No doubt Peter knew what it was to get to thinking too much of himself. Peter knew what it was to have a high spirit and a high thought of himself. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says in uh, Mark, the 14th chapter, the ver in verse 27, it's red letters. Jesus says, you will all fall away, Jesus told them, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. And Peter declared, even if all fall away, Lord, I will not. Jesus said, I tell you the truth today, yes, tonight, before the rooster crows twice, you yourself will disown me three times. And Peter instantly and emphatically said, even if I have to die with you, Lord, I will never disown you. I will go with you all the way to death, even if I go all by myself. Listen, in the next few scriptures, the Bible gives the narrative of Jesus leaving that conversation with Peter and going to the garden of Gethsemane where he prays until his sweat becomes as it were great drops of blood and he prays in isolation because the disciples are asleep and cannot pray with him Judas walks into that garden leading a band of Roman soldiers he betrays Jesus with a kiss and Jesus is taken off into the night here's what the Bible says in verse 53 they took Jesus to the high priest and all the the chief priests, elders, and teachers of the law came together. Listen to verse 54. Verse 54 says, And Peter followed him at a distance. Did you hear that? Peter followed him at a distance. Listen, this is the beginning of of Peter's demise. You cannot follow at a distance and follow successfully. Now listen, I, I don't know if you've ever followed me when I'm driving and I'm going anywhere, but if you're going to follow me, you better be ready to put your foot on the gas. If you're going to follow me, you better be ready to turn and go in a hurry. And if you're following me and you do it casually and you follow at a distance and you don't know where I am going, going, you probably are not going to make it to your destination because here's what happens when you follow at a distance. When you follow at a distance, you allow other things, other cars, other people to get in between you and the person you are following. And if enough things get in between you and the person you are following, you will not be able to make it to your destination. Listen, one of the greatest problems in the church today is not that people are not following Jesus. The majority of people in our community if you ask them the question are you a Christian? The majority of them will tell you yes, but here's the problem. If you get real specific and you say are you reading the Bible daily? Are you praying daily? Are you witnessing to people everywhere you go? Are you being light that is seen and salt that is tasted? Are are you honoring God with your tithe? Are you a true disciple of His? Listen to me. They will tell you initially they are believers, but when you begin to ask the deep questions, you're going to find out that they may be following Jesus, but they are following Him at a distance. And you listen to me. If you've pulled up on this campground, on this church parking lot today, or if you're listening by radio in your home and you are following Jesus at a distance, the way 
way Peter did. You are in danger of losing your eyesight. You are in danger of losing sight of the one that you are trying to follow to a distant place that you do not know how to get to without him. So I encourage you today, don't make the mistake of Peter and follow at a distance. You see, as Peter followed at a distance, he was given three opportunities to do the right thing. And every time he did, he failed. The Bible says that a servant girl saw him warming himself by the fire and said, surely you were with the Nazarene. And the Bible said Peter looked at her and he said, I don't have any idea what you're talking about. Then the Bible said a group of men said to him, surely you are with that man from Galilee. And again, Peter said, I do not know him. I'm not one of his disciples and I don't know what you're talking about. And then that little servant girl came back a third time and said, your speech betrayeth you. Surely you're a disciple of his. And the Bible said that Peter ran off into the night calling curses down on himself saying, I have never known this man. Listen, if you attempt to follow at a distance, you will wind up in the same place Peter was. You will wind up living in fatigue. You will wind up living in failure and your faith will will be futile. You cannot follow at a distance. Now listen, the Bible said that Peter wept and Peter cried. Listen, Peter was being talked to by the enemy of his soul. I promise you that old devil was coming up to Peter and saying, you're not faithful. You're so sorry. How dare you betray Jesus? How dare you deny that you know him? The enemy of his soul was casting condemnation on him. Now maybe you've never experienced what Peter was experiencing, but I know what it is to have the enemy of my soul cast condemnation on me and tell me you should have knew better. You should have done better. And when he does this, he's trying to drive a wedge between you and the Father who loves you perfectly. If you're here today and the enemy of your soul has ever lied to you, honk your horn so I'll know I'm preaching to somebody that knows what it is to go through this thing. Now you listen to me. The enemy of his soul was lying to him and telling listen, anytime the enemy of your soul is speaking to you, you can be assured that what he is saying is not the truth. Somebody got a big blowhorn out there. What, 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 if the enemy is talking to you, what the enemy is saying is definitely not true. It, the Bible says in John the 8th chapter that the enemy of your soul is a liar and the father of all lies. Anytime he speaks, he's lying. And the enemy was telling Peter, God's never going to use you. God's never going to help you. God's never going to touch you again. You were one of the 12. You were one of the three. It was Peter, James, and John in a sailboat with Jesus. And, and you still failed him. And the enemy was trying to push him into a place of condemnation where he could never walk with God again and maybe the enemy is doing that to you in your life. Maybe the enemy is telling you, you know what, you've wasted too many years. You've spent too many years not seeking God. Too many years not worshiping. Too many years not giving. And God doesn't have time for you today. Listen, if that's you, you need to let the resurrection do for you what it did for Peter. If you keep reading in Mark's gospel, I've read to you from the 14th chapter of Mark where Peter said, Lord, I'll stay with you unto death. And then Peter denied him three times because he followed at a distance. If you keep reading Mark's gospel in the 16th chapter of Mark, here is what the Bible says. The Bible said that two ladies went to the tomb to check on Jesus and to anoint his body. And when they were there, they were met by an angelic visitor who said to them, you're seeking Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. Why? Seek ye the living among the dead. He is not here, but he is risen. Then that angelic messenger said, Listen, go tell his disciples and Peter that he is risen. Listen to me. God speaks to these ladies and said, Go get my disciples and Peter. Now listen to me. Listen to me. The Lord did not have to give the special invitation to Peter. When the Lord said to them, go get my disciples, that covered Peter. 
Peter was a disciple of Jesus. But the Lord understanding that the enemy of Peter's soul was working him over. The Lord understanding that the enemy of his soul was telling him, your faith is futile and you are dead in your sins. You denied Jesus three times. You shouldn't have done it. You knew better. You were his chosen. You were there in the 16th chapter of Matthew and said thou art the Christ the son of the living God and now you can't even stand up to a servant girl and say that you know him the Lord knew that the enemy of Peter's soul was working him over telling him if God ever had a plan for you it's gone now if God ever had a hope for you it's gone now and so the Lord sent special invitations he said go get my disciples and Peter here's what God was saying God was saying Peter I know you've blown it Peter I know you've missed the mark Peter I know you've lied and you should have stood up and you should have said you knew me and you should have confessed me before men but you missed the opportunity but Peter my resurrection gives you a brand new opportunity to follow me because I have risen from the grave you can can rise from your failure because I have risen from the grave you can rise from your shortcomings because I have risen from the grave you can shake yourself off and you've got a brand new opportunity to follow me I want you to hear me and hear me well the resurrection of Jesus gave Peter a brand new opportunity to follow the Lord and Peter seized that opportunity and he followed the Lord with all of his heart Today, the Sunday after Easter, the resurrection of Jesus Christ gives you a brand new opportunity to follow. Listen to me today. If you have not been a student of the Bible on a daily basis, today you've got a brand new opportunity to say, Lord, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You see, if, if you are constantly stumbling in your Christian walk, if you are constantly stumbling, in your Christian witness it may be because you're trying to walk without the light on you're trying to serve the Lord without reading his word his word is a lamp and a light his word illuminates your path his word will keep you from sinning David said Lord thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee listen to me if you've not been a student of the Bible, the resurrection of Jesus gives you a brand new opportunity to follow and you can learn that it is truly your daily bread. Here's what the scripture says. 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and it is profitable for reproof, doctrine, correction, instruction and righteousness that the people of God may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good work. The word perfect means complete, mature, and lacking nothing. Listen to me. You cannot be a complete, mature Christian who lives without lack unless you are reading the Bible on a daily basis. And today, because he arose, you've got a brand new opportunity to follow him. Not only should you follow him in Bible reading, should follow him in prayer. Listen, the disciples uh, talked to Jesus and said, Lord, teach us how to pray. He said, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father, which art in heaven, you need to go and read the Lord's Prayer. You need to memorize the Lord's Prayer, and you need to use it as a pattern to pray. Prayer begins with worship. My Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, reverenced, feared, awesome is your name. You just move through that prayer, and and I know you think you get bored when you pray for three minutes or four minutes or five minutes. If you will use the Lord's Prayer as a template to pray, it will lead you into a place of intercessory. It will lead you into a place of petitioning God. It will lead you in a place of worship that allows you to spend minutes and literally hours in His presence. You've got a brand new opportunity today to be a student of the Word, a brand new opportunity today 
to be a man of prayer. You see, we've got people preaching about prayer. We've got people singing about prayer. We've got people teaching about prayer. We've got, we've got people doing conferences about prayer. But you know what the problem is? We don't have very many people doing it. Listen, you just got to do it. You got to shut the door, shut the blinds, put down the smartphone, turn off the television, and get along with God and talk to him and when you listen prayer is a two way conversation when you talk to him he talks to you if you've not been a disciple of prayer you've got a brand new opportunity today to say Lord I want to enter a relationship with you not only do you have a new opportunity to pray and to read your word listen because of the resurrection you have a new opportunity to be light that is seen and salt that is tasted Jesus said you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill therefore let your light shine before men that they may see your good works the Bible says in Colossians chapter 4 that you're to be careful how you act around outsiders that you're to make the most of every opportunity that you're to let your communication be filled with grace and seasoned with salt that you may know how to answer everyone listen if you have been ashamed to the gospel with your behavior with your words with your attitude in the past don't don't let the enemy condemn you about what you did yesterday because he rose from the grave we are not of all men most miserable our faith is not futile but we like Peter have a brand new opportunity to follow here's what I encourage you to do on this Sunday after Easter sitting in that car right now sitting in your home listening to this radio broadcast make a fresh decision that you're not just going to be a nominal Christian who like Peter before the resurrection followed Jesus at a distance. You come on Sunday morning you come twice a month or three times a month but the only time you open the Bible is when the preacher says turn with me. Listen to me. You've got to get beyond being a nominal Christian and you have to say I have drawn a line in the sand. I have cast my die. I have made my decision. I am a disciple of Jesus. I will not follow at a distance but because he rose I will get up out of my sin I will get up out of my failure I will get up out of my fatigue and I will follow him all the way home now listen if you follow me from point A to point B and you follow closely and you don't let things get between you and I you can get where I am going listen to me I don't know about you but my goal in night in life is not to live in a nice house my goal in life is not to drive a nice car my goal in life is not to have a lot of money my goal in life is to make heaven my home Jesus said I am going to a place that you can go also but you've got to follow him closely when you follow him closely all of a sudden those little petty things that used to bother you and get in the way of your relationship with other people and with God just begin to grow dim in the light of his glory and grace and you live a life free from offense and you follow God and when you follow him you know what you find out you find out the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters you know what he wants to do he wants to anoint your head with oil he wants to restore you for his great namesake he wants to prepare a table before you in the very presence of your enemies and he wants goodness and mercy to follow you all the days of your life I don't know what your yesterday holds I don't know what your story of last week last month last year was but really what's important today is not what you've done in the past what's important today is the decision you make right now and where you go in the future and no matter what you've done or how long you've done it it's God's will for you to follow him today Day with your whole heart like you've never followed him before. If you believe it, honk your horn and shout amen in this house. Just, just, just make a decision to follow him closely. Listen, right now in that car, make a decision to follow him closely. That I have been made keenly aware that there are people coming to this parking lot church service who, who have not traditionally come in this building. 
I, I, I venture to say, I venture to say that 10% of the cars, 15% of the cars sitting in this parking lot, you, you have made a fresh effort at coming to God's house through this crisis. I, I've talked to you. I've met you. You, 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 you've said to me, I've not been the church in three years. I've not been the church in 10 years. I've not been the church in 15 years. Listen to me. Listen to me. God has used these circumstances, these days in which we're living. God has used this to give you a fresh opportunity to follow him. Seize it. Listen, P P Peter did not waste the opportunity giving him fresh and new to follow the Lord. And I encourage you, don't waste this opportunity. Listen to me. Listen to me. The signs of the time are all around. Jesus is coming. Jesus is returning to this earth again. I, I want to be a disciple of His. And until He comes, I want to do His will. I want to lead other people into the saving knowledge of His mercy and His grace. I, I want to fulfill His destiny for my life. I, I, I don't want to live to fulfill my desires. I want to live to fulfill His desires. And here's what I'll tell you. If every person that worships at the South Cleveland Church of God will do what Peter did, and transition from following at a distance to dwelling closely to His Word, to His presence, and to His purpose. We will change this city in an impactful way for the glory of Jesus Christ. South Cleveland has been a light in this community for 113, 114 years. And, 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 and there's many triumphs we can talk about but but I'm telling you the best is yet to come for this house if if each one of us if each one of us will confess our sins and say Lord forgive us for following at a distance and help us to come closer than we've ever come before Here's what Paul told the people in his circle of influence. He said, follow me as I follow Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ. If, if you're following someone in a car and it's just you following them, and you let distance get between you and them, and you get lost, you're the only one that's lost. But you listen to me. If you're following someone in a car, and you're the first of six cars that are behind you, and you get lost, you, you've just caused everyone behind you to get lost. You listen to me. There's two teenage boys sitting in a Ford Expedition in this parking lot. They are watching their mom and dad follow the Lord. If, if I let distance get between me and him, it affects them. There's a, there's a girl in Nashville, Tennessee right now named Peyton. Her and her husband, Zach, they're watching. Don and I follow the Lord. And if I let distance get between me and God, it affects them. Listen to me. There are people watching you. There, there are people listening to you. There, there are people that are in desperate need of a close relationship to God. And the distance between you and Him doesn't just affect you. It affects them. Church, I have to do better. Church, 
you have to do better. Church, we have to do better. And because of the resurrection, we can. Here's my text to you today. If there be no resurrection, our faith is futile. If there be no resurrection, we are yet in our sins. If there be no resurrection, we are of all men most miserable. But indeed, Christ is risen. So because of that, your faith is not futile. Because of that, you are not in your sins. And because of that, you are not of all men most miserable, but you are of all men most blessed. Let's, let's come closer. I, I, I don't know how long I'll be preaching to you from this wooden platform with rain dripping on my head from this little sad, sorry tent I got above me. I, 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 it, it may be two or three more weeks. It may be a month. I don't know. But from this parking lot or from that sanctuary, let's come close to Him. Let's, let's follow Him in Scripture, prayer, worship, witness, and giving. In, in giving, we've got to follow Him. We're, we're reaching out to people in this crisis. I, I'm going to take a check of $1,000 from South Cleveland. Now, now listen, you, you, you may hear this and think, is, is, that, is he really a missionary? He's a missionary this week. The, the mayor sat down with me. And the mayor, with tears flooding down his face, said, Pastor, there's a food truck. The, the man doesn't even live in Cleveland anymore. He lives in Chattanooga, but he was raised here. And, and he heard about this tornado. And, and if, if you've not seen the area that it hit, unfor unfortunately, it, it, it's a very poor area that got hardest hit. And it's unfortunate that the people who have the least have lost the most in this time of crisis. That little food truck went over there and set up and fed over 100 people every day out of his own pocket off of that food truck without charging them a dime. We're going we're gonna to give $1,000 to him, and it'll replenish what he's done, or he can do another day. It, it'll help. He spent way more than $1,000, but, but that's made possible when, when you follow Christ in your giving. You, when, 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 when you keep giving, we keep doing. So you got a brand new opportunity to follow close. Get, get close to God. So those that are close to you don't get lost and can find their way. You've got communion elements with you. If you'd open that communion. I wonder today, have you failed him? Have you lost your way because you've been following at a distance? Have you wasted days, weeks, months, years, decades following at a distance? And has the enemy of your soul told you it's too late for you? You, you, you can never be part of God's plan. Listen to me. Peter denied and cursed said, I don't know this Jesus. And the Lord said, 
to the women, go get my disciples and Peter. There is Peter, there's room for you in spite of your failures. Peter, there's room for you in spite of your denials. Peter, there's room for you in spite of your sleeping while I was praying. And I hear the voice of God saying there's room for you. Today, South Cleveland Church of God, there's room for you. There's, there's room for you in the kingdom purpose on the earth in the last days. And all you've got to do is say, Lord, I believe in the resurrection. And I seize this new opportunity to follow you. Would you lift that bread to heaven right where you are and say, I love you, Lord. And today I remember you. And I make a fresh commitment to follow closely. Lord, I remember you. And you can take the bread. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, breath of God, breath of God. look around this parking lot and I see dew, rain falling. I see, I see a fog, a mist rising from the surface. And I'm praying that God will send an anointing in that sanctuary when we return. That we will see His presence. That we will see the former and the latter rain together. That South Cleveland will be what it's never been in this city before. God, let our best days be before us and not behind us. God, anoint us. Show us your glory, Lord. And give us a new opportunity to follow you ever so closely. Everyone in this house with that cup in your hand, symbolic of his blood, just say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Oh, God. Every sin, every failure, every mistake, every shortcoming, every foot, every yard, every mile I've let get between you and I, forgive me, Lord. Give me a new opportunity. I'm going to do better. In Jesus' name. practical point of the resurrection is this. You can rise from your failure. You can rise from your fatigue and you can be God's voice. Peter preached a message on the day of Pentecost and 3,000 people were instantly added to the kingdom. At the voice of the one that denied. At the voice of the one that cursed. At the voice of the one that ran off into the night. 3,000 people came close. What, what can you do for the kingdom in the future? What, what can you do for your family, for your friends? I feel the Holy Ghost of heaven. Slip your hands to heaven and worship. Slip, just, just worship. Oh, holy God. 
holy Lord of heaven and earth. Oh, minister to your people. Sing this song of worship with Pastor Nate. Sing, Nate, sing. somebody's head and praying for them and asking God's blessing and I'm just Jones and to lay my hands I can't lay them on somebody but on something and so, so we're going to we're going to keep worshiping right now and I'm going to slip down to the bottom parking lot as you're leaving you can give your, your, your tithe and offerings thank you for the way you've given we're, we're not operating in lack we're operating in abundance God has blessed us we're helping people we're making a difference drop your tithe in on the way out and as everybody leaves, if you'll just give me a moment as you pull by, I want to put my hand on the hood of your car and pray for you and ask God's blessing just very quickly. It won't take me a second. I'm going to lay my hand on every car, and I'm going to ask God to bless you indeed, to enlarge your territory, to keep you from evil, to let his hand be with you, to anoint your head with oil in the very presence of your enemies preparing tables before you and to cause goodness and mercy to follow you all the days of your life. Nate, just lead us in God's presence and worship them. Just worship with them, and, and they'll, they'll begin to leave uh, just, just sporadically pulling out. Just lead them into the presence of the Lord. Sing that song. i 
beside you There has never been anyone, anything like you Nobody beside you There has never been anyone, anything like you Nobody beside you There has never been anyone, anything like you Nobody beside you There has never been anyone, anything like you Nobody beside you The glory is yours. 